All right. I wanted to try a little bit of uh, <clears throat> kind of older, over the shoulder design. That's, I guess, what I'm going to call it. But essentially, most of my videos have all been they're pre scripted. I know what I'm doing. I've already figured out what I'm going to talk about and what I'm how I'm going to do it uh, before I get to the page and before I make the video so that they don't go on forever. So <clears throat> what I thought I would do is kind of like having you watch over my shoulder while I'm doing just some ad lib web design. I'm not the best web developer or designer in the world, but <laughs> um, people seem to find what I do interesting and the way that I teach, they seem to be helped by that. So maybe it would be helpful to watch the actual process of going through uh, the web design process using Moby Rise. And I'm also going to be, I'm trying to test out the limits of Moby Rise, the platform, with Bootstrap inside of uh, Moby Rise. And so maybe it'll give you some good ideas for your own websites. Maybe it'll show you how you can utilize Moby Rise if you're a Bootstrap developer uh, to be able to get projects up off the ground very quickly. And then you can see how you can uh, begin to manipulate those blocks um, even within the Moby Rise software. So what I'm doing is I found this website on Envato and uh, Theme Forest. So it's a really popular HTML5 website. You can see it has some some similar functionality already to uh, Moby Rise, just with the shrinking header and some other things. Take a look through here. It's a very long page. I'm sure they don't expect you to put all this stuff in here, but there are lots of different uh, sections and options uh, to put things into your website. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to uh, match this a little bit. So here's what I have so far in Moby Rise. I'm matching some of the ideas. <clears throat> this is actually a, a video header. Got a little get started now. And a nice little download. There's a section on with some not scrolling numbers, but just some big numbers. Um, this was already a, this was just a blank HTML block that I I built essentially with uh, built the HTML out for it and applied some CSS classes. And that's what I got, only using uh, Bootstrap. So using some of the classes that Bootstrap offers, and uh, pulling in an image. I have a nice little. Um, this also I built. I could have used one of uh, Moby Rise's sections, but I decided to go ahead and build one. This is actually. It's actually a strange thing because this this gallery header is this part here. So this section of, with the gallery starts right here and goes all the way down to here. So it looks like this is its own little section, but it's actually tagged on uh, in between this one and you know where the gallery actually starts. So it's actually inside of this big container with the gallery. So it was a little bit of an optical illusion I wanted to create. So all I did was add a section above another section that I created, which was the gallery. And then I've styled quite a few styles here for the gallery. And one of the things I did was I applied a little drop shadow, kind of a material design drop shadow effect to it, which was nice. And so this is like a you know, here's some pre-made templates to choose from that you could use with this business starter kit. And then now I've gotten down to here. This is all um, within Moby Rise, so you can actually do quite a few nice little things uh, just with the Moby Rise blocks. And so this is where I'm here on my site. <clears throat> I'll show you where I am. So this is the gallery, kind of. You can see a similar idea here. And then moving down through the gallery. 
this could be done. I decided to skip it, so kind of down in this in this area here. And then now I'm moving on to maybe some sort of uh, slider. They have kind of a cool little slider here that shows you the different header options and some of the different body options, footers available with this template. So let's take a look um, at this. Pretty sure this is going to be uh, pretty easy, but this is a little bit more of a challenge. So what I'm what I'm doing right now is I'm just setting up the easy parts, kind of uh, blocking it out with Moby Rise. So um, it's best to have this slider here. I'm just going to add this in. So this is uh, unlimited options, and then we would show some of those options here. <clears throat> and taking a look, give it a nice background. See. So I have an overlay that's on each slide. And I'm going to have to style the background all by itself. I can't make any style. I can't do anything with the background itself because there's no options here. Um, but what I am going to do is uh, take off the buttons. And the bullets are here. Take those off. No autoplay. So we'll leave that like that. We'll have to come back and we'll have to do some styling. We'll have to do some styling on these uh, on the slider blocks. So the content right now is aligned to the right, due to the left. Just doing this one uh, center aligned. Left, we'll do right, the third one. So on this one, we just want to take all the buttons off. Now we have a title, we have some text. And I want to go through and change all those. Uh, I've been using Railway for my my headers and I've been using open sans for my text that's a little bit large for my taste so I'm going to tone that down a little bit I like that and we'll do the same thing for uh, slide number two this needs to go to the left And slide number three can be right aligned and that'll look right. So we have kind of center, left, right. This one didn't do it, did it? There we go. See if that sticks. Yeah. So we have a nice slide uh, show here. And in order to make our slide show, you know, a little bit nicer. Uh, we can give it this nice kind of gray color on the outside. We have a little bit of a gray color here, so maybe uh, it would be best to just stick with the white. Maybe we can put some sort of a, a border or a shadow or something around that. So I'm going to open the code editor. Just unlock the code editor. Once you do that, you can't uh, can't go back. So, um, you can see that they're importing some things for the, uh, they're bringing in the Google font um, calls, I guess is what you would say. This would normally be in the head of the document, but they're calling it here because I've already made the changes. Let's take a look at the, 
at this up here, what we want to do is we want to add, let's go ahead and start with this here. We've got a nice little, basically a full width row, one, two, three, four columns, all center aligned, really just four. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's an icon with uh, some text beside it, so uh, this should actually be relatively easy put together. So let's make a different section up here, just like I did before. Um, actually, we don't need to do that. Let's just create a div up inside of this section. And I'm just not sure where to jump into this fight yet. I think here Got a line there. Create a row. We'll close that div. And then inside of that, we'll put our four uh, pieces of text. One of the things I like about this text editor, I'm not sure if it's built on the Atom text editor, but that's what I use. You could see it just a minute ago. So this is the uh, IDE that I use. It's called Atom. It's from the GitHub people. That's so open source and free uh, text editor. Similar to Sublime or even Notepad or Notepad++ or whatever you use. Uh, I like it. This feels, this editor here feels a lot like it. So uh, they also have some of the things um, that I like to use like Emmet. Emmet is kind of a shorthand way of writing HTML. You can see it here. So to type uh, p tags, you would just type p and hit tab. Or if you needed to do an h1, you'd hit h1 and tab. So it's really nice. It's called Emmet, E M M E T, I think, or E T T. And uh, it just makes your HTML code writing a lot quicker. Uh, what you can do is you can start a div. And then for a class, you just put a dot, just like you would normally do for a class. And then you click that. And then it creates a div with a row. So you can see how the shorthand actually creates the, uh, the HTML. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a div with a class of uh, column. Actually, let's go ahead and just make this a row column. <clears throat> so one column all the way, all the way across. And we'll see how this works. I'm going to create uh, some of my um, I'm just going to create my words here. So what did they have? Unlimited Unlimited headers, footers, dark and light, boxed and wide. All right, and what I want to do is I want to, I think, turn this into a menu. And when we're using uh, Bootstrap, you can see I've been on the Bootstrap uh, website. It's getbootstrap.com. I've actually been on here for quite a while now, just looking through the different things that are available to me. Um, what I'm really looking for is a menu. So I would think that that's under the components, but we'll see. Navs. I'm accustomed to working with foundation, um, so I'm not quite as familiar with all of the things that are available with Bootstrap. There's a lot of overlap. They're not exactly the same. So. What I'm looking for is maybe a list group. Let's 
Looking for a way to turn a menu into turn a menu into a uh, I mean an unordered list into a menu. You know if that's available. This is the glamour and the amazingness of web design. Figuring your way through everything. Most of the time this is just how it works. It should be right in here where the navigation is. Maybe it's just nav. Maybe that's it. Okay, so uh, let's try that. Let's just try nav here. And it says that we should roll, should make it a, normally make it a navigation type of deal, but what we're trying to do is to create a, an order, unordered list. And what we're going to do with that unordered list. is create uh, one two three four items so we have four items across right so this is what we're going for one two three four we're going to turn this vertical unordered list into a horizontal navigation we'll see if this works Copy that. All right. So we have our unordered list. Let's give it a class of nav, and we'll see if that turns it sideways, uh, horizontal. And it does not. Um, let's see, I know that they use navbar a lot. Let's see if we got, uh, no. All right, well, back to the old drawing board. So what I usually do, uh, horizontal navigation and bootstrap. I really like the w3schools.com. There's a lot there um, to be able to help you out. Uh, you can see that there's a ton of things. This is a whole bootstrap. They have jQuery, PHP, SQL, JavaScript. So they have tons of tutorials to take you through the basics. So navbar is a list of links. This is exactly what we have. And
They're just creating a CSS nav bar. Not exactly what we want because I think that there's something there with Bootstrap. Let's see. Nav bar, nav bar default. So that's to create this nice little all the way across nav bar. That's not really what I want. What I want is just some navigation. And I guess I'm just going to have to get there in a different way. See what happens if we make a breadcrumb. Ah, there we go. That's getting us closer. And we just have to uh, style those breadcrumbs. That's definitely a little bit closer to what we're what we're looking for. All right, I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're just going to go back to the uh, CSS. It was showing us how to do a navigation bar. It's just a list of links. Um, so we can do this and just copy and paste it. We'll take care of the classes. And then uh, let's just go down here. So we are in, I don't know, we'll call this container. Uh, we'll give it an ID of These aren't exactly links. I don't know. Words over slider. It's not the best uh, the best ID, but it does get the job done. So we'll do that uh, UL there. So you can see here it's taking away all of our margins. It's taking away our our bullets. And go back. So this is telling you how to build a vertical navigation bar. You can see that. We want horizontal. So here we are. So we want to use inline. So we'll just say 
We'll start with inline and we'll see if that gives us what we need and then we'll go to block if you want if uh, that's a better thing for us to do. <clears throat> okay. Alright, and we're not getting it at all. Uh, we got to go to uh, the list item, that's one. Okay. So we have to do the list items, and they should be display in line. Okay, there we go. So we have them all there now. And... They have some padding here around each of them. We could do that. We're not using the uh, A, so we could just give it some padding here. And we'll do that. So top and bottom, maybe one M. And left and right. Doing this might spread them out a little bit too far, but seems okay. And we want to try to we'll try to just add a centering right here and see if that works. It did not, so Bootstrap already has a centering class. It's called text center. And then you can add it up here. You add it in the containing div. Normally that'll center it all, so you can see. And then what we want to do is we want to put a nice uh, border, I mean, a, not a border, but some margin or padding on the bottom. Let's do a margin under the words over slider div. So, I mean, not the, yeah. So we use the ID tag, and then we'll just say margin bottom of 2M. See if that gets us a little bit of space. Good. So now we're doing it. We're working this place. Maybe that's not quite enough. Might be nice to have a little bit more. So let's say, let's say three. Close to two. That gives us a little bit more. And we want to add in some. We want to add in uh, the little check marks. So if we can get some check marks. So what we do is we go to bootstrap.com and components. And then under the components are these glyphicons. So it's glyphicon OK. That's the name of the one that we want. And you add it by adding this to your text, I mean to your uh, text editor. So I think we can just put that in before each one. Let's test that and see. Okay, so it looks good. <clears throat> and we'll have to style that a little bit. So the first one is going to be, actually they're all going to be um, okay, unless there's the one with the circle, yeah, so, so okay, okay dash circle, that's what we'll use. Let's copy and paste. We'll check it out. All right, so we have our circles, somewhat similar uh, to what we had going on over here. So you can see that the circles are quite a bit bigger, and actually they're check marks with uh, with a border, which we could do that too. Um, show you how to do that with a border. 
So we just do the OK. And then we're going to style that Glyphicon. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to go in here, somewhere in here, and we'll say Glyphicon OK. Border, uh, one pixel, solid. Uh, we say uh, D, seems fine. And then in order to get a circle, you do border, radius, 50%. That'll give you a nice circle. Uh, it's going to be right up against the check mark though, so we got to give it some padding. Uh, maybe half an M. We'll see. We'll see what that gets us. Okay, so essentially that's what they've done on the website. Uh, very similar. And then we can put a little bit of uh, padding there next to that as well. Um, so I'm um, sorry, margin to the right of maybe, um, I don't know, same thing. So let's see, so that gives us a little bit of breathing room right here. Gives us the nice thing. You can see that it's essentially what they have here. They just have a blue uh, with a gray box. Um, and now I'm going to style the text. So words over slider, li, that's this one here. One of the things that bothers me about this is the people at MobiRise are watching. I wish there was a little bit of chance to add some padding down at the bottom so that it doesn't get stuck at the bottom of uh, the CSS editor. Um, what we want to do is do font family. I think we have this called already. So P is the one that we want. I'm going to make these list items uh, to be open sans. You can see it's changed a little bit. And oh. I think we could, I, guess, I suppose, just bring that font size down. We'll see what 1M does. If that's the true font size or not. Okay, so that's what it is. Let's bring that just a little bit down and then everything. Uh, yeah. We have the padding set at two on each side. What do you think will happen if we do one? Bring it all together a little bit. There we go. That brings it all together. We had too much space on each side of each list item. So right now we've created a nice little, um, I don't know, a listing, I guess, similar to what they have here. Uh, we could even make these bold in the same way if we wanted to. So if we want to do each of the list items, the way you do bold in CSS is font weight, and that is bold. Now we have them bold. I don't like that quite as much. So instead of bold, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a text. I do want to set it off a little bit. So I'm going to make them all uppercase. Maybe that'll help. Yeah, that helps a little bit. So there we have unlimited options, unlimited headers, footers dark and light, boxed and wide, and then we would need to add some uh, images here that would show that, and then you'd be able to just kind of flip through each of the slides. I uh, can't do it right now. So that's a little small part of the process of uh, doing web development when you see it here. You can see what we've done in the browser. You can see here that the video starts in the background. 
I'm going to get started now. Brings you down here. Suppose we can make these scrolling numbers if we had a little bit of JavaScript. This is a totally completely done section out of Bootstrap. Here's a nice, again, all this section is together. I've just put this section right on top of the other. Nice little download now button. Uh, each of these has a little hover effect on it. They don't do anything. If you click them, they go back to the home. Uh, but they have a nice hover effect on them. And then we have this unlimited options section. And this is the part that we just did, uh, along with our slider. And then we would just keep moving just kind of down the page. Um, I've been pleased with how this is working and pleased with the way that Moby Rise, uh, I don't know, the way that it functions, that it plays. I haven't had to touch much of anything up here yet. And I haven't had to touch much of anything here. There are some things I'd want to pull these letters together a little bit. I'm not a big fan of the uh, letter spacing uh, that they have. Same here. I would go back and I would redo some of these. Uh, take away maybe a little bit of space here. Make this a little, maybe not quite as thick uh, or as tall. Maybe do some, change the letter spacing here. I like it pulled together a little bit more. This is all me doing it and not Moby Res. Um, so just a little over the shoulder glance at what it's like to just go through. This is not a large part of the uh, not a large part of the website. But you can see I can just take some time, you know, moving through, especially using uh, Bootstrap, which I don't normally do. I can move a little quicker with foundation um, just because I'm more familiar with some of the base components. But it, it behaves much the same as Bootstrap. They're just different terminology. Um, foundation just makes more sense to my brain, uh, which is, you know, I think that's what you need to do. You need to try out several different um, frameworks if you're going to use a framework. I've looked at three, four, five before settling on foundation. And uh, I even tried to go through Bootstrap and learn Bootstrap and some of the things that they're doing just didn't make very much sense to me. Maybe I'm more of a designer, and uh, Foundation is built more from a design perspective, and Bootstrap seems to be built, you know, from a, a developer perspective. It's uh, built by the guys who started Twitter. So maybe it just makes more sense to me because I'm more visually oriented, more design oriented. Um, not sure, but you just got to choose what's best for you. So I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, just leave a comment. If you have any questions or you want to see more <laughs> about how I make it through this website, then uh, just leave a comment. And uh, I look forward to hearing from you. If you have any questions, um, you can leave a comment, of course, on the video, or you can email me at brian, B-R-I-A-N, at highwaywebconsulting.com.